that means when the response is not on you so the council understands a lot of uh, lot of point but the council like to again reiterate that the arguments put forth by my co council and myself or rest on the point that everything the empty pack violates the rights of all persons like he contended it on the ground that it violates the right of the pregnant woman i contend i contend it on the ground that it violates the right of the father and the unborn child also. so the arguments put forth by the my co council and myself are complementary to each other no, 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 and on the whole no, 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 the, no, no, please at least clarify us whether any termination of pregnancy is allowed or not according should be allowed or not it should be allowed if there is a threat to the life of the pregnant woman or not then what happens to the unborn child they are right Lordship, uh, the council's contention. Uh, Lordship, uh, if if there if if a termination is undertaken only to protect the right to life of the pregnant woman, then it rightfully falls under the three twelve of the Indian Indian Penal Code. Lordship, medical termination of pregnancy. No, but that then then three twelve will be violation of Article twenty one for the unborn child. Why are you killing the life of my mother? I want to serve her. Lordship, uh, the reason why that why that is because if the mother dies, both the mother and the child will die. Then there will be no. that the child that the unborn child in the womb of the mother acquires viability during the 24th week your lordship right conferred upon the unborn child by any law you know so that, that the uh, if if the if the the council's contention is that the unborn child is to be considered as a person and the article 21 confers the right uh, right life to a person can you give us the definition of person indeed your lordship uh, for this uh, particular purpose uh, the council like to direct a lot of attention to Page twenty-nine uh, of the memorial, your lordship, of the petitions memorial. In para forty-nine, your lordship, uh, the council has reproduced a dictum that uh, a child in his mother's womb is for many purposes regarded by legal fiction as already in born in born in accordance with the maxim nascitus pro jam nato habit. No, uh, this principle translates to that an unborn child shall be considered to be a person for its own benefit. Taking this principle into consideration, various legislative enactments. Uh, Uh, consider unborn child to be a person lordship for a can you can you name one of those indeed lordship how you can tell lordship for instance the limitation act considers an unborn child to be a minor uh, section 6 section section 6 of the limitation act considers an unborn child to be a minor if uh, the council would be allowed for one more time what 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 uh, Disability. Indeed, Indeed. Disability. that is a minor or insane. Under what circumstances they can institute a suit or file application? Indeed, Indeed. it is not in concern of an unborn child. Lots of uh, the explanation. Once the limitation act starts, no, no inability or disability will stop that particular running of a time. It has nothing to do with your argument. Lots of uh, the council also like. <laughs> Okay. The council would like to refer to section thirteen of the Transfer of Property Act, okay. section twenty of the Indian Succession no, 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 Act. Transfer of property. What does it say? A transfer for the benefit of unborn person, your lordship, for the benefit. So when 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 when, when, when the transfer will come? come? Only on the birth of the unborn child, your lordship. That means you become a person only when you are born. Lordship, we have under law or we have, but the child can do the doctor for the reason only when the child was born. Lordship, uh, for for the sake of clarity, the council like to direct the lordship's attention to uh, page number three of the compendium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Where it has been said is that uh, the Honorable Court stated that true an unborn child is not a natural person, but it is well known that after six weeks life is infused into the embryo, thus converting embryo into fetus. And once an embryo evolves into fetus, the heartbeat stops. In other words, the unborn life has life from the stage it transforms into fetus. If the if the unborn has life, though it is not a natural person, it can certainly be considered as a person within the meaning of Article Twenty of the Constitution of the Republic. And also for the same, you will be considered as a person as a person when the child is born. Well, sir, uh, this particular judgment recognizes the right right to life of the unborn child for sixth week of pregnancy, or not? That is what the court has held in this particular judgment, sir. And uh, uh, moreover, the council would like to place reliance on the case of uh, Jabbar was a state which has been reproduced in uh, page eighteen of the compendium, sir. Page eighteen of the compendium. Yes. Wherein the court has said that the word person has not been defined in such a way as to involve a separate existence of the living creature spoken of as a person. As there is no such technical definition, I prefer to adopt the ordinary meaning of the term person as including a child, whether born or unborn. Your worship. What is the heartbeat? Your worship. What is the heartbeat? Is, is, is it a partial demand for the child, or is it a, a ratio of the child? But sir, in this particular case, uh, the case before the court was uh, there. There, there was uh, there was an unborn child has been killed, Your Lordship. So the case before the court was whether that would amount to uh, would be uh, offence under Section three hundred four of the Indian Penal Code, holding that the unborn child within the definition of person, the court held that it would amount to an offence under Section three hundred three hundred four of the Indian Penal Code. And four years they didn't pin a good election. So in this case, so, so, so if you cause uh, intentionally a bad election, it would be a good. Uh, it would be an offence under Section three twelve of the Indian Penal Code. Not a bad. Three twelve. This case. Three not four a. Uh, in no. In the no. So therefore, if a living person is killed, it is going to three not two. The uh, lordship, the distinction has not been made clear by the legislature at this point because uh, the unborn child might might be aborted even before six weeks of pregnancy. Lordship, in that circumstance, it might not be the no even after twenty four weeks. After twenty four weeks, if it is if if there is an abortion charge or somebody is taken, it's not a murder. But according, according to, to your, your terminology, we accept, accept that the child is born born like a whole person. We should have been born born. Uh, sir, uh, to the limited extent of granting right to the life of unborn child under Article Twenty One, it should be considered as a person, Your Lordship. Okay, go ahead. Your Lordship, uh, uh, moving on to second limb of the argument, if you are also satisfied this particular issue, the council is moving on second limb. Could you, could you go into four point three? You are saying it is your procedure is out. Ah, uh, indeed, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, uh, for this particular, to subject to this particular point, the council like to uh, take two limbs, Your Lordship. The first limb is that the MTP Act is excessive. Uh, this is subject to the point that the council like to draw Your Lordship's attention to expression one to such a three clause two, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, sir, with me at that, uh, I will uh, reiterate the presumption. Uh, just two minutes, excuse me. I will reiterate the presumption under the Act that uh, arbitrary power is conferred to the pregnant woman under expression one to section three clause two, wherein the woman is having terminated pregnancy, wherein it might not have been caused as a result of actual contraceptive failure. The woman herself may concern the content that is a result of contraceptive failure, and she can terminate the pregnancy. Your Lordship, this confers arbitrary power on the woman. Every law must be arbitrary. You are talking about, about it is not possible for us to verify whether the woman has used contraceptive or not. In that sense, every, every law is available. Lastly, the uh, your lastly the council's contention is also that uh, by the holding of the Honorable Court in this Indulekha Shetty Union of India case, the life of the unborn child starts in the fifth, sixth week, your lastly. But the MTP Act allows termination of pregnancy till the twenty-fourth week, wherein the Uh, uh, the liberty is given to the pregnant woman to terminate. Why? 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 Why?
Apologies, the procedure is arbitrary for the reason that uh, in as stated by the Honorable Supreme Court in the case of Menaka Gandhi was Union of India, uh, the procedure is not just fair and reasonable. Which procedure is not just fair and reasonable? Not take into account the fact, that, the fact that the right to life of the unborn child starts on sixth week of pregnancy. And also that, that also the council's context would be that the implication of that must also be taken into consideration. That is not a procedure. Whether to be terminated in CBP 7 or 8 days, it is a substantive. You are talking about procedure. What is the procedure in this that is under? Does the act provide any procedure for identifying whether the interest should be terminated or not? Uh, the, the act doesn't proceed, pro, uh, the, pro, the norm providing any procedure under the act is the yeah, main re yeah, 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 yeah. that the, the procedure that the termination shall be undertaken till, uh, from 24. No, no, that is substantive. Procedure is whom to approach, what, what, or what, what application to be filed, who will be filed. There is a medical code in this and the rules. In light of the issues raised, arguments advanced and authority cited, the council prays that before this honorable court that the honorable court shall be pleased to hold a judge and declare that the women have an absolute right to retain or terminate her pregnancy, that the medical termination of pregnancy act and the Indian penal code violate the woman's right to retain or terminate her pregnancy, that the medical termination of pregnancy act violate the father's right to retain the unborn child, and that the medical termination of pregnancy act violate the right to life of the unborn child, and pass any other decree or order that the honorable court may deem fit in, in, in the interest of justice, equity, and good conscience. It was an honor arguing before this. The council seeks permission to present the case. Much obliged, Your Lordship. The council seeks permission to address the dais collectively as a lordship. Much obliged, Your Lordship. The council would be appearing on behalf of the respondents, Union of India, in the present case. The council will be dealing with issue number one and two, and would be taking 16 minutes. Sorry, Your Lordship, and would be taking 22 minutes of this court's precious time. And the other council would be dealing with issue number three and four, and would be taking 20 minutes of this court's precious time. And we respectfully reserve three minutes for the sorry buttons. If your lordships are well, well, uh, well versed with the facts, the council would like to proceed to the issues. Yes. Much obliged, Your Lordship. The council shall be presenting our arguments on issue number one, that is, whether women have an exclusive constitutional right to retain or terminate the pregnancy. In addressing the issue, the council will be elaborating on the point that rights under Article 21 are not absolute and can be restricted when there is a compelling state interest. This will be explained by way of a twofold argument. Firstly, that the right to reproductive autonomy does not outweigh the interest of the state to protect the life of the unborn child. And secondly, that the state has a constitutional duty to protect the pregnant woman's health. With the Lordship, Lordship's permission, the council would now like to proceed to the first submission. Much obliged, Lordship. Your Lordship, the Supreme Court, in Justice K.S. Puttuswami versus Union of India and others, held that right to reproductive autonomy 
being a facet of right to privacy must be balanced against the state interest in regulating abortion. This interest of the state to preserve the life of the unborn child was also recognized by the U.S. Supreme Court in the famous case of Roe versus Wade. This can be referred to on page two, page three of the compendium. I request the court master to present the compendium. Don't you, don't you think that the Roe versus Wade judgment would go against it? So, pardon your lordship. The judgment of the Roe versus Wade would go against it. Your Lordship, several observations were made by the uh, court in Roe versus Wade. One of the observations was that when the fetus becomes viable, that is, capable of existing outside the mother's womb, then the state has an absolute right to restrict the determination so, so of pregnancy. Therefore, so therefore, if we accept that, would you agree that after 24 weeks the woman has an absolute right to get pregnant? No, Your Lordship, the, the state would not agree so, that. that, 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 that in your lordship, the, the council is taking the one observation of the uh, the court that the court has held while recognizing the right of the uh, that, that, that term. Indeed, your lordship. That's not right. Right. We can look at the judgment only if there is a ratio to be held out in that judgment, not the past or what has been passed by the judges there. So you have to rely upon the judgment only when there is a ratio laid and would support your contentions. Indeed, indeed, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, uh, does, uh, the court under uh, uh, page number five has held, has asserted the state interest on the page, in the page five of the compendium. Here the court has held that the state interest lies in the protection of health and safety of the pregnant woman and protection of the potential future human life within her. These are the legitimate objectives, amply sufficient to permit a state to regulate the abortions, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, continuing with the uh, submissions. Is it not the woman who decides whether her health to be deteriorated or not to be deteriorated? Why the state has an interest? Indeed, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, abortion is a type of medical process where there are several complications that might arise during the whole process. The woman will, may not be may not know about those complications. Therefore, so the, then we will put a condition that the doctor should explain to her. Your lordship, your lordship, the council would like to make a difference between the abortion and the other medical procedures. In the other medical no, procedures, no, no, my question is very clear. Am I master of my own body? For example, you you cannot restrict drinking. You cannot restrict somebody's eating. Excess. Indeed, your lordship. They, they know that it is going to harm them, like cigarettes. Indeed, your lordship. So, put the same thing that abortion induces health. Indeed, your lordship. Your lordship, in abortion, it's not only the body of the women that is involved. It's not only the women only that is involved, but at the same time, it's a potential life that is involved. It's not only the women only that is involved, but at the same time, it's a potential life that the women is carrying in a womb. Therefore, to balance the interest of the women as well as the child. But you are allowing them to terminate their pregnancy. Indeed, your lordship. Therefore, what happened to the interest of the child there? Indeed, Your Lordship. Your Lordship, that's the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act, it's, uh, what uh, it prescribes. Only in specific situations, the termination is allowed, keeping in mind now, the now, health now, of the now, women. Now tell me, under the rules, the new rules that you... 2021 rules, Your Lordship. Yes. It says, a woman can ask the termination of the pregnancy if she becomes a widow or a divorce. I don't understand the logic. Indeed, indeed, your lordship. Your lordship, when the widow becomes a when the woman becomes a widow or a divorcee, then there is a, a type of societal pressure that occurs on the no, women. No, and at the same, no, 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 no. state going to decide as to how a woman is going to have her life. No, the state is going to decide about it. And there is no taboo for a widow or a divorcee. Uh, maybe older ladies are divorced. Indeed, your lordship. Your lordship. With that, the council uh, was submitting that comes a mental pressure that affects the mental no, health no, of the woman. What is the mental pressure for the widow? You know, at, least, at least her husband is alive through the child. She would be more happier than to have that child. What kind of mental pressure is there? The fundamental right of a woman, and you are restricting her fundamental right of a woman by saying a widow and a divorcee should not be allowed to continue the pregnancy for so long. Right? That is what your uh, theme of argument is. That a widow or the uh, divorcee 
Your lots of the other con- the other reasons can be the uh, the uh, the pressure of the family. Your lots of people doesn't know that why the why the women has become the widow. Yeah, or it can happen that the family. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Yeah. What about a single woman? A, a single woman who become pregnant without marriage. Do she has a right to be pregnant? Your lots of she definitely has a right. If she falls under the condition. No, no, no. You tell me. You tell me whether she falls under the empty. Your lordship, if the life of the women is in danger, no, 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 no. she is fine. She is absolutely fine. She is just not married, got pregnant. Can she ask for termination under any circumstances? Your lordship, she can ask for the termination if the pregnancy has occurred out of the failure of the contraceptives. No, no, nothing. Nothing. Now we are not talking about women who do not have diabetes. That aspect is fine. You lot should know the the no, unmarried women that we have there is no social pressure under them they have no being a single not married social pressure there but you are not allowed to do terminate that means we say that this class situation what it is unreasonable in the dialogue Your lordship, uh, in the present case, it's the it's first of all it's the constitutionality of the medical termination of the pregnancy act that has been challenged. So, and the petitioners have contended on the section three and section five of the medical termination of the pregnancy act. So, the, the respondents restricting the arguments on section three and the section five would like to proceed and not would like to uh, uh, argue on. No, no, but but the rules were made in accordance with that. No? Indeed, your lordship. Section three. Section three says. From a quarter to twenty-four, when they can be terminated. Now these are the grounds that are given under the rules. Therefore, the rules will come part of the act. A might have had directly argued, but that is because of that. I agree. You are arguing very cleverly to avoid that question. In your lordship, the council would like to make one submission that for the minor women or for the unmarried for the minor women, a provision has been provided in the medical termination of the pregnancy act where it provides for the consent of the guardian, your lordship. So for the so for the minor women, the the union uh, uh, accepts that there is a societal pressure and therefore the union has provided for uh, a provision where it provides for the consent of the guardian. If the guardian gives the consent, then the termination of the pregnancy is allowed. What the guardian doesn't give consent. Your lordship, for a minor, your lordship, your lordship, for a minor woman, it has been held by the Supreme Court also, and and since time immemorial that guardian is the best uh, person to decide for a minor woman, your lordship. So therefore, when it comes to the minor women, the societal pressure is what the guardian handles it. So for a single mother, but for minor, you do end up. Okay, okay. Proceed, proceed. Much obliged, much obliged, your lordship. Your lordship, proceeding with the arguments. So it is pertinent to note that pregnancy not only involves the woman's body and her autonomy, but also a potential life in her womb, which the state has a duty to protect. Your lordship, every right has a correlative duty to not intervene or interfere in the other's right. The Supreme Court in Pastor Banga Khet Mazdoor Samiti versus State of West Bengal. It can be referred to on page eight, para nine of the compendium. If you like, just may refer to page eight, para nine of the compendium. It was observed that right to life enshrined in the Article Twenty One includes a duty on the state to preserve the life. However, your lordship, when an exclusive right is given to the women but to terminate, that, that the judgment is nothing to do with abortion. That is an accident case. Indeed, your lordship, that yeah, is an accident. Where the hospital is not ready to admit. 
Indeed, your lordship. However, your lordship, the observation of the court that was held in that case. Madam, 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 Madam,
you inform all these things to the woman and then the woman will still be more okay. She is an adult. Indeed, your lordship, she is an adult. But at the same time, it's not only the women, but also the unborn child that the that the union has to see the interest of the unborn child that the union has to protect. So the union has to. For that, I am already discussing. You are allowing the woman to maintain the pregnancy when she is diagnosed with new other things. Indeed, your lordship. That time you have no interest to protect the unborn child, but all of a sudden the other things is there. How come that is a double standard? Your lordship, uh, in restricting the woman's right, it's it's uh, it's first the interest of the unborn child, and second, it's also the interest of the right of right of the health of the women that the state tries to protect. Your lordship, the state has a duty under Article Forty Seven of the Constitution to preserve the public health and interest. So, in the light of its, in the light of that duty, the state tries to restrict the right only to specific situations where the health of the, where the health of the women or where the abortion is extremely necessary. Therefore, this balance has been struck. That is exactly my concern. That the state is becoming more and more nihilistic. So we are adults, we capable of taking decisions. If you read Putu Swami's case, it casts a doubt against. Prohibition of liquor and other laws. Right? So, like cigarettes, cause us more death. But still, we allow with a one. So, can we do the same thing in this? Your Lordship, uh, the council would like to make one some one uh, argument. The argument is that as about the informed consent. Your Lordship, in Devika Biswas versus Union of India, a 2016 judgment, it was held that women have reproductive rights to make informed and responsible decisions about their own bodies. This means that for a real exercise of reproductive autonomy entails giving an informed consent, because consent without adequate information regarding the procedure that you are consenting to renders the consent an informed one. Which is actually true in which is actually in true sense no real consent at all. To ensure this true exercise of the right, the framework for the approval of the registered medical practitioner and in certain situations the medical board has been provided under the MDP Act. Your Lordship, adequate medical guidance proffered by the registered medical practitioners, while allowing or restricting the abortion services, ensures that the women seeking an abortion are apprised of their conditions. Their prognosis, the treatment benefits, the adverse effects, and all the long-term consequences that the abortion may have on the uh, uh, health of the women, your lordship. Informed consent being an essential element of reproductive autonomy, of which the right to terminate pregnancy is a part, the mandatory requirement of seeking the advice and approval of the registered medical practitioner has been uh, has been provided under the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act, your lordship. So therefore, open a counsel service and uh, remove a key. Oh, pardon your lordship. Open a counsel service and remove a key. Let them move and decide. Your lordship, now there's another one uh, problem. Why the registered medical practitioner has been provided? Your lordship, when the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act interacts with the PCP NDPT Act, that is the Preconception and Prenatal Diagnostic Techniques Act of 1994. So under that act, what happens is it provides for uh, it provides for sex selection practices prevailing. It prevents the sex selection practices, but tests such as foreign virus biopsy or uh, amniocentesis and diagnostic ultrasonography that are done in the first trimester till the second trimester, which were de uh, which were developed to uh, detect the fetal uh, abnormalities under the PCPD NDPT Act. So now, what happens is when the uh, 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 people go under that act to detect the fetal abnormalities, when they find that there is some uh, abnormality, they decide to terminate the pregnancy. So, your lordship, to prevent such termination and to prevent such uh, rampant uh, increase of the uh, termination of the pregnancy, an approval of registered medical practitioner has been provided under the act, so as to ensure that to, uh, there is no uh, abuse of such uh, act and there is no abuse of such provisions in our. Legal framework, your lordship. If your lordships are satisfied, the council would like to proceed with the submissions. So, your lordship, in the light of the same, uh, 
So further, your lordships, reports shows that abortions in the later stages of the pregnancy significantly increases the maternal mortality rate as the fetus becomes viable and capable of surviving the outside the mother's womb like a full-born baby. This can be referred to on page 26 of the compendium. The statistics shows how the maternal mortality rate increases at the later stages of the, uh, the pregnancy. Also, your lordship, even the object of the act is to provide safe abortion to reduce the maternal mortality rate. Thus, in the light, in the your lordship. Uh, yes, your lordship, the council has submitted. So, in the light of the same, the council submits that the act is not unreasonable or arbitrary, but is completely constitutional and hence should not be declared void, but should be remain unconstitutional. Much obliged, your lordship. The council now would like to invite the other council to present the case. Much obliged. It was a pleasure uh, pleading before you, your lordship. <laughs> Lordships, the council seeks permission to address the bench as your lordships or your ladyships as preferred by the bench. They may be finding it offending to address themselves as ladyship, so you can do as my lordship. Not lordship. I probably use your honor. Much obliged, your lordships. My lady just did it. Yes, it doesn't sound. Your lordships, the council here. Would like to present the case of union for se uh, for the third and fourth issue. The Lordship of the Council seeks permission to proceed with the third issue. Much obliged, Your Lordship. That the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act does not violate father's right to retain unborn child. The tenable reasons being, firstly, that the right to reproductive autonomy is not inclusive of the father's right to retain unborn child. And secondly, that the Medical Termination of Pregnancy Act is not violative of Article 40. Firstly, Your Lordship, it is submitted that the right to reproductive autonomy is not inclusive of father's right to retain unborn child. It is submitted before this honorable court that in the case of Menka Gandhi versus Union of India, in paragraph 18, it was held that a right not expressly recognized under the constitution can be guaranteed as a fundamental right only if it forms the integral part of any fundamental right, recognized fundamental right. It must partake the basic nature and characteristics of the recognized fundamental right. It is pertinent to note that in the case of K.S. Putta Swami versus Union of India, 2017 case of lordship, paragraph 72, that the court reaffirmed that the woman's right to retain or terminate pregnancy is derived from a woman's right to bodily integrity. However, in the case of B.K. Parthasarthi versus State of Andhra Pradesh, when the court dealt with the man's right to reproductive autonomy, uh, if your lordship could kindly refer to page 40 of the compendium. Yes, indeed, your lordship. In paragraph 14, when the court recognizes a man's right to reproductive autonomy, it derives it from the right to take intimate decisions, as if your lordship could refer to paragraph 10 of the judgment on the previous page. It derives it from the right to take intimate decisions. Your Lordship, these are different facets of the right to privacy. So this right has been derived from the right to take intimate decisions. And in paragraph 15 of the decision, the court recognized the productive decision as one such decision. Now, it is evident, Your Lordship, that a man's right to make decision about reproduction is only limited to the extent of deciding before conceiving a child. As the father's body is not involved in any way in the pregnancy, a right that forms part of the right to bodily integrity can in no way be extended to father. Moreover, your lordship. No, your lordship. Indeed, your lordship. Your Lordship, interest can arise in many situations. However, they do not warrant guarantee of a right. Your Lordship, for example. Indeed, Your Lordship. Your Lordship. 
Indeed, your lordship, the council understand your lordship's concern. However, it is evident in many situations. For example, your lordship, parents are obligated to take care of children after birth. However, they do not have a right to decide their life choices. So it is evident. It is there in many situations of life, and so here that a father has a duty. Eighteen years, you are taking care of your child and their life, future, everything is decided on our parents. However, your lord should not after that. After eighteen years, leave your lord. But here, here, there are other things before eighteen years. Before zero, zero years. So in implementation of this act, that is medical termination of pregnancy act, na eight. 1971 are you not trying to create some dispute between husband and wife are you not trying to say you take your own choice i will take my own choice you do whatever you want i will do whatever you do then we'll go for divorce together right the bargain individual you like like to be born indeed you lordship the council understand your lordship's concern however such Constitution does not mandate father such a right, no, and it doesn't mandate any right. It doesn't say say uh, you are a man, so you can tell me personally would you like to have some understanding about the child? Tell me about petition of the Rajasthan Council. Personally, you as a father, you are telling me. You know, actually, the council's personal view is completely irrelevant to the case. It's the laws that can run us. No, I'm not asking you, but as a legislative person, in the law, does the person have a legitimate interest in the child? Does the person have a legitimate interest in the child? Does the person have a legitimate interest in the child? Does the person have a legitimate interest in the child? Exactly. That is the reason I asked the council on the other side whether he was married or not. Because a person, until he is married, he will never know. what would be going through in a family matter right so your experience will definitely count to argue a matter or argue for any person it is for the woman or the man Okay. Indeed, your lordship. However, would like uh, council would again reiterate that his view is immaterial. Still, to answer your lordship's question, the council agrees that pregnancy has more effect on a woman's body, so she should have a right to decide. Indeed, your lordship. Your lordship. Further, the council was again supporting this contention by stating that an unborn child is an intrinsic part of the mother's body. and any such decision about mother's body cannot be considered as a man's right right to privacy not only warrants exclusion of the state also exclusion of your uh, neighbors it there were a lot of it is the consent of neighbors also no no we no. take consent no you lot of in the present case uh, father is a neighbor in this a close neighbor but a neighbor and you lot of an entity No, your lordship. Not the one entity. It is submitted that clearly the basic nature and character of father's right to reproductive autonomy and the right to retain or terminate are distinct, and therefore right to reproductive autonomy is in no circumstance inclusive of father's right to retain pregnancy. So you you also have to take information to the other side. We will be taken by surprise when a child is born. <laughs> Indeed, your lordship, the council understand your lordship's concerns. However, firstly, like uh, we should have been careful while the child was being conceived. Secondly, your lordship, the information disclosure might uh, put more burden on the woman to exercise her right. Indeed, your lordship, your lordship. this has been also reiterated by this very court in the case of z versus bihar where it was a similar case as to that a woman could not get her pregnancy aborted till 32 weeks because of these things that the hospital asked for guardian consent or the spouse's consent and did not abort her pregnancy see my question to you is what is the impact of this thing in relation to our relationship with father what would be the problem the problem could be that father's interest would only surround the unborn child and the interest of the woman would be ignored he would not care for the woman's concerns what she is feeling or she might not be able to express completely therefore a woman is a better judge for her own body's condition and plus the medical uh, people are better judge for her condition
but not the father he's not the expert and he doesn't have a right in that much of the lot uh, the council moves towards the second submission that the medical termination of pregnancy act does not violate is not violated on article 14 It is humbly submitted that the Supreme Court of India, in case of the Vex State of West Bengal versus Anwar Ali Sarkar, uh, if your lordship could kindly refer to page twenty-four of the compendium, twenty-nine, your lordship, apologies, twenty-nine. The court held that Article fourteen does not prohibit classification for the purpose of legislation, and if your lordship could please refer to thirty-one of the compendium, that gives. You know, sir, there has been added parameters for the test, but since uh, council uh, for petitioners con con contested the reasonable classification, the council for respondent are just satisfying your lordship that such reasonable classification is proven. Indeed, your lordship, in additional parameters of arbitrariness have been added, but. Suppose there is no classification at all. Uh, no, your lordship. There are other parameters on which the law has to satisfy. What, 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 what is the standard? That the procedure must be just, fair, and reasonable. Uh, for fourteen, your lordship, that like, uh, there should not exist manifest arbitrariness. Okay. So you have come to the answer. So now you explain us why there is no arbitrariness. Your lordship, arbitrariness has a lot of aspects. So, if your lordship could kindly be more specific as to what I am saying, they have explained that there is on what grounds they said that you are arbitrary. If you tell me why it is not right, indeed, your lordship, one such ground was reasonable classification. The other, the council contended, was the principles of natural justice. Your lordship, though it. it Might be contended whether such a uh, decision would be considered as an administ uh, administrative decision to be come under the principles of natural justification. Sorry, principles of natural justice. Still, to satisfy the conscience of the court, the council would like to reiterate that principles of natural justice are not uh, are not to be followed in every situation. There are certain conditions where we can exclude the principles of natural justice. Firstly, it is specifically excluded from the act. Now, what warrants such exclusion are these three conditions: that right to a prior notice and an opportunity to be heard before an order is passed would obstruct the taking of prompt action. Your Lord, so this in this case, a prompt action is required in many situations, since after 24 weeks, it is not uh, advisable to uh, terminate. Where the nature uh, of the action to be taken, it, its object and purpose, and the scheme of the relevant statutory provisions warrants its exclusion. So, Your Lordship, this act is particularly based to protect women's health. And as Your Lordship, uh, the Council clarified that what would be the impacts of requiring father's consent and informing him. So, Your Lordship, therefore, principles of natural justice. Uh, this situation warrants the exclusion of principles of natural justice. Your Lordship, the Council would like to, uh, if Your Lordships are satisfied on Article 14, or the Council would like to elaborate the reasonable classification, establish the rules. Indeed, Your Lordship. So, Your Lordship, it is submitted that the Act differentiates between a man and a woman on the grounds, two grounds, Your Lordship, that the pregnancy solely affects the woman's physical and mental state, and the second ground is that the decision to carry a child has serious consequences on women's self-worth, stability, and the right to dignity, which is guaranteed under Article 21. If Your Lordship would kindly refer to page 36 of the compendium. Uh, if you lot to the with me the statement uh, 36 the statement of object and reason for the mpp act states that the measures are taken therein to seek three major objectives out of which two are related to women the first objective seeks to prevent grave danger to mental and physical health of the women thereby establishing the reasonable nexus between the object and first ground of differentia made under the act the second objective seeks to provide a remedy to women Where such pregnancy arises out of a rape, sexual crime, etc., and thereby seeking to protect the dignity of the women. Therefore, your lordships, it is submitted that reasonable classification had been made under the Act, and it does not violate Article 14 of the Constitution. If your lordships are satisfied, the Council would like to move towards the fourth issue, that is, rights of the unborn child.
much of light reduction the that the medical termination of pregnancy act does not violate the right of an unborn child the tenable reasons being that the right to life of an unborn child is subject to viability and secondly that the mtp act instead protects right to live with dignity of the unborn child if your logic could kindly refer to page 24 of the compendium your logic there is a report of the american college of obstetrician and gynecologists the report uh, presents that viability is achieved around 24 weeks of gestation period so your logic the state re uh, recognizes right to life of the child at viability in the case of indru lekha shri ji versus union of india and your logic it's a duty of the council to inform the court that the petitioner in this case council for petitioner in this case misleaded the court by stating that in the judgment uh, the state uh, the court recognized right to life at 6 weeks however in that state uh, in that judgment the court explicitly stated that a child should be equated with that to a person and given equal rights at attaining 24 weeks and thereby granted uh, really uh, compensation for death of child civil compensation so logic here the court recognized a uh, right to life of the child at attaining 24 weeks of uh, gestation period at the stage of viability even in the case of roe versus wade your logic from which the council for petitioner derived their right to privacy for women it has been recognized that the state has a compelling state interest to interfere and with the rule of abortion at the stage of viability if your logic could kindly refer to page 4 of the compendium you know what the council uh, the council understand and logic concerns however right to life of the unborn child is recognized after 24 weeks and therefore the standards are higher for such termination in within the act as the council will point out before that there is a compelling state interest to preserve potential life that has relatively lower grounds and so the uh, the act allows relatively lower bars for pregnancy preferring women's right the so logic around 20 to 24 weeks where around which the chance of viability increases so let me ask the same question i could you are saying that unborn child by right around 20 uh, at the stage of viability right to life not not right to life, right to life will be granted at stage of viability however state has a compulsory right to life you know also the council would like to clarify that uh, if right to life is recognized the bars are raised higher however before that state has a compelling right to life whether the child some woman conceive have a right to life are right, right to life will come after 24 weeks however the state is obligated to preserve life so in fulfilling that obligation the state has put parameters and to support You mean to say that uh, they, they want, want to put the focus? The state is wrong in taking government. You know, it's uh, not necessary because, because uh, supporting this contention is another point. That in the state of, uh, in the case of Jhanka versus state of Punjab, this Supreme Court. However, the facts are different, but still the ratio would apply as it is uh, similar. Uh, which the council will explain how it will apply you know that the court uh, recognizes that right to life cannot be extended to achieve anything which extinguishes life there you know that the uh, council were contending that you are allowed to extinguish life after 24 weeks and certain certain conditions but on certain conditions you are not not if the child is alive for 24 weeks why is it kind of Indeed, your logic. So, before, as council stated, the right to life could not be extended to include anything that extinguishes life. Here, women's right to terminate pregnancy is being derived from right to privacy, which is part of right to life. So, without prescribing certain conditions under which exist, uh, extinguishing of another life would be allowed, makes it reasonable. And after 24 weeks, the state is accepting that. a unborn child has right to life and therefore prescribing higher standards that is until life of women is in danger the uh, pregnancy cannot be terminated and again you know as my council reiterated again and again that those conditions are also to enforce right to reproductive health of the women 
which was one of the major reasons for enacting this act since it earlier uh, before this act there are many unregulated abortions and uh, wasted of women's reproductive health indeed your lordship the lord they for your lordship around 20 to 24 weeks when there's an increased chance of viability the act prescribes stricter conditions there uh, an opinion of two medical practitioners is required and statutory exemption for mental injury to mental health under the act is decreased further your lord beyond 24 weeks that is the stage of viability only two grounds for elimination of uh, right to life of the child are that uh, if there are substantial fetal abnormalities or there is a threat to right to life of the women which satisfies the test of proportionality as given in case putta swami versus union of india on paragraph in paragraph 120 of your lordship as uh, it warrants both the less after 24 weeks your lordship the uh, since there is a legitimate act prescribing such elimination there is a legitimate state objective it satisfies the necessity stage as there is no other way available to prevent the life of the women which is clearly stated in the act and balancing stage is clearly satisfied as it is to protect right to life of the women therefore your lordship it is submitted that the act does not violate right to life of the unborn child which is subject to viability furthermore your lordship the council would like to state that the act actually protects right to live with dignity of the unborn child the lots of in the case of francis corelli mullen versus administrator utv of delhi the court widened the ambit of article 21 to include that it is not limited to mere physical existence it include within its ambit right to live with human dignity and the bare necessities of life and adequate nutrition clothing and shelter over the head and facilities for reading and writing and everything else that forms a basic part of expression of human life therefore your lordship it is humbly submitted that before the honorable court that continuation of unintended and unwanted pregnancies not only affects the women's health and well being but also washes down the family gravely affecting the child's right and well being it is further submitted therefore your lordship uh, court allowing women who do not want such pregnancy or had it from failure of contraceptive allows right uh, protects right to life with dignity of the unborn child the council would like to proceed towards the prayer much of life your lordship thank you very in the light of facts presented issues raised argument advanced and authority cited it is humbly prayed before this honorable court that dismiss all the petitions declare that a woman constitutional right to terminate her pregnancy is not absolute hold that the medical termination of pregnancy act and other indian laws do not violate women's right to terminate the pregnancy hold that the medical termination of act does not violate father's right to retain unborn child hold that the mtp act does not violate a right to life of an unborn child and or pass any other order that this court may be pleased to in the interest of justice equity and good cause the council would be humbly uh, bound for this act it was really a pleasure pleading before your lordship <laughs> you know to the council is pleading from <laughs> May I continue with the? Uh, we we grant you three minutes because we exceeded there. Much of it. Much of it. Much of it. A lot of the. My Lord, you have corrected in both the uh, concept submission. Indeed. We were very really confused. Uh, indeed, indeed, my Lord. Please make yourself corrected in the. Based on that, indeed, my Lord. In this instant case, my Lord, there have been four separate petitions that have been prepared, and later uh, the Supreme Court, using the inherent powers under Article One Thirty Nine A, have grouped all the four petitions together because of the similar and substantial question of law nature uh, contained in this instant four uh, petitions, my Lord. Which is why, uh, my Lord, there there uh, there is no uh, room for uh, contradiction in this particular. A petition, or it may uh, look like that because these are, these are to be viewed as a 
separate uh, petition, but the courts have clubbed all these four petitions together. Moving further, my lords, with, uh, my learned friend for the respondents have said that uh, we have voted the uh, misleading the court by voting the wrong judgment, my lord. Uh, if the court may uh, kindly uh, uh, refer to the compendium, my lord, of the case of Indilika Sridhar versus the Union of India. Uh, page number three, my lord. Uh, if you me, the council like to proceed, my lord. Much of that. Yeah, my lord, uh, in the highlighted para, it clearly states that after six weeks, the right is conferred to the unborn child. Lord, uh, and we haven't uh, misled the court in any uh, uh, manner, my lord. This, the, the, this is the extract of the judgment itself, my lord. And uh, I would like to clarify one second that we haven't misled the court in any manner with regards to this particular judgment. Much of that, And your lordship, during my course of the argument, your lordships have posed a question regarding the powers of the State Election Commission to issue such a restriction, my lord. The council would like to clarify upon that by saying that uh, State Election Commission has no such powers to issue or such a restriction. It is because uh, placing a, a restriction with regards to qualification or the conditions with regards to disqualification is a power of the parliament and only the state can make. This has been the council also like to quote the constitutional provision, my lord, if I may. Article 173, my lord, which guarantees the qualification uh, of the members who want to contest the elections with regards to the state, my lord, the state elections. Uh, indeed, indeed, my lord. My, uh, ap apologies, I couldn't clarify it uh, before itself, my lord. Uh, apologies. And also, my lord, the council would also like to contest that there's a uh, contradiction in the actions of the state itself. Yeah, lots of, uh, election commission is a part of the state, it's an instrumental of the state. And by issuing such an order, that is the basis under which this issue has come, my lord. And uh, MTP Act itself, that is also an uh, action of the state and part of the state, my lord. Both these have to be taken uh, together and it is uh, to be viewed that the actions of the state with regards to the order which has been furnished by uh, state election commission and the legislative action which is also action of the state through MTP Act are in direct contradiction to each other. This would be the humble summation of this council. Lord. If you count our uh, lordships have any further queries, the council will be obliged to answer. Much obliged, your lordships. It was indeed an honor to argue one second before the council. Much obliged, your lordships. Uh, you lordships, uh, firstly, that the judgment of Indraji Suleka equates right to life of a child with that of a person around 24 weeks in the last paragraphs of the judgment. So, the council was trying to establish right to life for an unborn child using that judgment, therefore, the council contended. So that is, uh, secondly, uh, secondly, your lordships, uh, with respect to the election commission's order, that is a separate issue. And in the judgment of DK Party Sarthi versus State of Andhra Pradesh, the council earlier stated it was held that the state has a compelling interest to control population. Council's right to procreate would be violated there if the state altogether stopped them from procreating or sterilized them. However, the court clarified in that judgment that their state is only discouraging the people from not creating more child, thereby not violating their. Yes.